Many of you may know of the Streisand effect, or at least heard of it in passing. It's like this. According to those sometimes right, often wrong, and usually axe-grinding assholes at Wikipedia, the Streisand effect denotes the phenomena whereby an attempt to hide, remove, or censor a piece of information has the unintended consequence of publicizing the information more widely, usually facilitated by the Internet. A photographer was engaged in a project to photograph thousands of miles of California coastline, documenting erosion as part of the California Coastal Records Project. Of the thousands of miles of coastline photographed from a distance, there was the property of some very rich and important people. But apparently none was so important as Barbara Streisand, whose property was photographed in image number 3,850. Streisand sued to the tune of $50 million for invasion of privacy and lost. Before Streisand tried to suppress a photograph of her property, no one gave much of a fuck. Probably no one knew this was Streisand's property and even less cared. Streisand's very attempt to suppress is what generated interest in the first place. Recently, Germany took Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf off their list of banned books, and it sold out almost immediately. That's not because Mein Kampf is a good read. It's not. It's to literature what Hitler's lifeless architectural watercolors were to art. As Hitler wrote it when he was serving a ridiculously light sentence after the beer hall putsch, it's quite literally the work of someone who had nothing better to do. The only source of interest was that the fucking book was banned for 70 years. And that's it. That's all it takes to make forbidden fruit sweet. Ever hear of ear pornography? Neither have I. But change mores and dress codes, treat ears as a sexual organ not to be exposed in public, reintroduce the wimple, and within a generation, pornography would start to look like your ear, nose, and throat doctor's professional journals. That's just how this works. The Streisand effect, though, isn't just the lure of the forbidden. It's the sheer schadenfreude of undoing someone's sense of entitlement and willingness to game the system to express that entitlement. That is, the Streisand effect is not just the result of a natural reaction against censorious conduct. It's also a reaction against the central core of narcissism that that conduct reveals. Now, I can understand why Karen Stolls now would want her original accusatory fundraising video purged from the Internet. Like many vindictive false accusers, she thought her accusations would be precise enough to damage the target of her accusations without taking on a life of its own. Unfortunately, when she made specific claims that later proved to be untrue, offered specific evidence to bolster her untrue claims that later turned out to have been forged, and raised thousands of dollars on the pretense that the only thing preventing her from proving her untrue claims in court was money, and then didn't even come close to using the money to do what she promised, and then never gave it back, The last thing she would want is a two-minute video of nothing but her face and her lies kicking around the internet for anyone to refer back to. However, Karen and Baxter, the mere fact that you prove to be an embarrassment to yourself does not a copyright claim make. I'm not a lawyer, despite my father's best advice, and I don't claim this to be a legal argument, but I would propose that when someone disseminates a public accusation against someone in a public medium for public consumption in order to not only publicly damage a person, but to use piteous appeals based on lies to siphon money off the public, that one cannot rescind placing this in the public domain simply because, in the end, it blows back in your face. That video, or whatever medium it is, ceases to be creative property and becomes, instead, evidence. And there's that sense of narcissism and entitlement. Karen Stolls now, apparently taking up the slack in her marriage, has some massive balls. 
It's like a check forger telling the cops, the courts, and the people who were ripped off that those bad checks are now copyrighted and so there's nothing to see. That's the kind of balls of someone who rents out a billboard to announce Bob Smith is a goat fucker and then sues Bob Smith for taking a photograph of their intellectual property, which happens to be 14 feet tall and 30 feet wide and visible along a major highway. These are the ethics of a person whose only metric is that they get things their way, and anyone who doesn't acquiesce to that single standard is just being a dick. And speaking of dicks, let's revisit what Baxter, Karen Stoll's now sometimes muff stuffer and full-time personal assistant had to say. He wrote, Mike Aru, listen, we finished our situation with Radford. We both want to move on. We don't spout off in the social justice world, and they have forgotten about us. If you'd like to talk calmly and openly about this, let me know. Anything about copyright there? No, of course not. Like a Barbara Streisand lawsuit claims to copyright are just a means of Karen Stoll's now getting things her way. They are finished with Radford because they lost. They want to move on, as if anyone should give a fuck what they want. They don't spout off in the social justice world. That sounds like the rationale of someone who has given up a life of crime and wants everyone on board now that they've declared, using actual words, that they've gone straight. For reals. No fingers crossed. Social justice dummies, they claim, have forgotten about the dynamic duo of the doormat and the shitty shoe. That's because it never occurs to really stupid people like incoherent, bullying, virtue-signaling, self-loathing, social justice clowns, that the past is prologue. Or to sum up Baxter's appeal to reason, me, 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 us, us, us. Now the real question is, if Karen Stahl's now's Girl Friday, the common open Baxter, had asked me to remove the two-minute video in question, would I have done it? Well, the first thing I'd have to do is remember I mirrored the video. I had completely forgotten about it. So had everyone else. But the answer is yes, I would have, because at that point, I wouldn't have cared. As of a couple years ago, I made my point and considered Stoll's now, in the strictest fork-sticking sense of the word, done. What made me care is the preemptive copyright strike that has nothing to do with copyright. After all, we're not talking about a song, a skit, an opinion, or anything worthy of creative protection. This is history. This is evidence. And is about as creative as Karen Stoll's now in a drunken bar hop making pressed ham with her ass against a plate glass window. This has everything to do with Karen and Baxter wanting to move on now that they've failed spectacularly and become enriched fraudulently and exercise the narcissistic entitled right to impose their will on everyone else, demanding we all move on now that even they have had enough of their own bullshit. That made me care. A whole lot. Enough to make another point. You see, Karen and Baxter, you aren't masters of gamesmanship. You probably suck at chess, you probably get dominated in Connect Four, and you could lose to a trained chicken at tic-tac-toe even if you were spotted the center square and the chicken was retarded. What kind of dumb fucks couldn't anticipate the next move when, to paraphrase John Gilmore of the Electronic Frontiers Foundation, the internet treat censorship as damage and roots around it. You see, before what inevitably happened happened, before the two dozen mirrors of Karen Stoll's now's original accusatory e-begging video began popping up everywhere like magic toadstools, I wrote them one last email. Which I didn't send them because, on reflection, fuck them. They don't deserve a private discussion. And so I wrote, Baxter and Karen, 
As I have had no response to my offer of leaving off Karen's accusatory e-begging video in return for withdrawal of the copyright strike, I rescind the offer. Obviously, your aim is to whitewash the past and in the process damage my presence on YouTube. Just because YouTube removed Karen's two minutes of duplicity doesn't mean no one had the video archived. And since taking into account Karen's pattern of behavior in this regard, I feel obligated to give a voice to victims of her harassment. And the first step is to not allow Karen to memory hole her punitive craziness. Now, anyone with half a brain could have figured out what comes next, which means in practice, if the two of you put your heads together, you still wouldn't have seen it coming. As of this writing, there are at least a dozen mirror sites hosting Karen's original video with commentary, so no one will ever be so ill-informed as to believe her lies and fall victim to her frauds. This isn't about you or her or even me. Now it's about the next people you and she will harass, victimize, and defraud should you ever be handed a clean slate. As you're so big on preemptive moves, you can preemptively quit your bitching now. I gave you every chance to deal with this. You decided to create a problem, and then, because you are very, very stupid people who routinely fail containment of your own bullshit, decided to ignore it in the hope it goes away. Mostly, I'm very, very offended by your half-hearted limp dick tactics. I'm not one of those people drunk enough to bang either of you. Apparently, not many this side of embalmed are. Baxter, I'm not one of your idiot fans who buy into your hipster douchebag paranormal investigation shtick that makes you look like one of a pair of bookends fashioned after Otho from Beetlejuice. I'm not one of those quasi-skeptic SJW morons wearing a surly Amy cat turd necklace that you two pal around with to provide mutual support for your shared delusion that you are not all dumb as bricks and smell like ass. I'm not so incredibly stupid to have gotten my wallet out just because some psychotic sexual used car salesman like Karen asked me to. I'm not your mom, I'm not your buddy pal, and when people fuck with me, I don't expect them to be nice. I don't expect them to be right. I don't expect them to fight fair. But some sense of commitment, the very thing you lack, is a bare minimum requirement. I reject your application to be my nemesis due to your lack of qualifications. If there's an adult annex course on Machiavelli for dummies, even one that involves making it's better to be feared than loved paper crafts, sign up for it and get back to me. If you pass. And no, I won't take your word for it. I wash my hands of this and of you only because my 15 minutes of this video, like your 15 minutes generally, are up. And at least a crazy bitch like Barbara Streisand could sing. You talentless shit biscuits.